Spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well. In children's church, we used to say, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Spring up a well. New life abundantly. Break open prison doors. Set all the captives free. Come on, say it over your house. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Come on, say nothing can stop this joy. Oh, we are. Holy Spirit move. Say, spring up. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. I'm made alive in the river. I'm made alive in the river. My family's changed in the river. We're not the same in the river. We'll proclaim your name in the river. You are God of the river. Lord, we bless you in this place today. We thank you for your presence flowing in this place. We thank you for your power and your presence in here today. I thank God for freedom in this house right now. Every chain broken. And to never return again. Every stronghold broken. And never returning again. We thank you for your presence in this place today, Father. We thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you for who you are today. Let's put a stamp in a refining declaration on our praise today with this song. Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you. Come on, Sophie, let's say together, the Lord bless you.
generations and your family and your children and your children and your children restoration in every household. Take it and go. Take it and go. Take it and go. Come on, let's Hold declare it again. Altar. May his favor be upon you. Can you declare it for your house today? May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence, may his presence go before you and behind you Beside you, all around you, and within you, he is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your calling, and you're going, and you're weeping, and rejoicing, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you.
be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children and children go before you and behind you and beside you and around you and within you he is with you he is with you with the more Unthinkable, the unimaginable, the impossible. Do that. That's who you are. That's who you are. Father, and right now I need you to lend your voice. Lend your voice. Lend your voice right now for your house. Come on, say something. Say something for your house sake. Father, I ask you today to restore every dashed hope. Proverbs 13 and 12 says the hope deferred. It means it keeps getting put off, the realization and the manifestation of it. It makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is as a tree of life. So, Father God, I command that tree of life. Manifestation. Somebody please say that. Please say manifestation. Please say it. Say it. I call for the manifestation. every house every house every house every house every house every house Father I command your peace the peace of God that's what passes all human understanding drill every heart 
Console us and we'll be consoled. Embrace us and we'll be embraced. Save us and we'll be saved. I ask you, Father God, to save every household. From despair, from hopelessness, from depression, from delay, from discouragement, from sadness, from grief. I pray, Father God, I see in the Spirit, I see in the Spirit, it is, it is as if you're standing in front of a dressing room. And I see you're taking off that garment of weariness and putting on a garment of praise. And the wardrobe is set and it's got one in there your size. You're going to have to put it on today. You're just, some of y'all going to have to thank God in advance. You're going to have to thank Him in advance. Anybody can thank him after they have it right there in front of them, but who can thank him in advance? Listen to this prayer. Father, I pray that you would deliver every house and every family in here. Listen to me. Listen, listen to this. From every plan of the devil. I need you to get real loud. You need to get real loud. ask you to deliver every family and every house from every plan of the death. And we exchange it for your plans for our house. Father, I commend your desires on every house. There's some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers some missionaries and things. I don't care where they are here today. Isaiah 60 says that your son shall return from afar. They'll return. And your daughters will come and nurse at your very side. I command wholeness in every house. Father, I pray for every man. I pray for every man around this altar today. Who has dealt with addiction, repeated patterns of failure. I'm declaring it in Jesus' name. That's not who they are. 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 Father God, I thank you in Jesus' name. They come to a place where they serve you. And they're not, they're not the bond servant to that addiction anymore. I pray for every, every struggling man in this house that they would step forward today and step up into every plan that you have for their life. In Jesus name. I pray, Father God, for every hidden secret that needs to be brought out into the open in order for restoration to take place. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit today, manifest your good plan in every house. I declare it, I, I've been declaring it again. I call every house here today, every family, free from every plan of the end and delivered over into the promise of God in Jesus' name. And every believer said, you receive that for your house? Bless it, bless it. Bless it, bless it. Lift it up. And beside you, all around you, and within you, he is with you, he is with you. In the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping, and rejoicing. He is for me, he is for me, he is for me.
placed a lot of emphasis there just now on men. But I have an additional prayer I want to pray here today. We're living in a time that you've heard talk of in shadows and glimmers in times past. And we're in the middle of it. In times and challenges that we've never faced before. Out of that realization, I pray this prayer. That there would be strong parenting in this house. Strong parenting. Strong parenting. Strong parenting in this house. We step to the plate. We understand the time that we're living in. We understand the ground that we're currently walking on. You're trying not, not trying to be down with your kids. Be a parent. Be a parent. You're not trying to win their popularity contest. You're raising them up unto the Lord. Their children, they're like arrows in the hand of a warrior, a skilled warrior. You've got to aim them right. That's right. Father, I pray for strong parenting in this strong house. Help us, Lord. Strong, strong parenting. Strong parenting. Strong parenting. Strong, parenting. strong, parenting. strong, strong parenting. grandparenting. Strong grandparenting. In this house. Yes, God. Father, I pray that none of our seed. I need somebody to step up here with me on this. Yes, God. Father, I pray that none of our seed will ever be lost. None of our seed ever lost. Though. None of our seed ever none, lost. Though. None of our seed. None of our seed ever lost. None of our seed. Our seed and our seed seed. I pray to not not one will be lost. Father, I pray in the hearts of our precious children, our seed, that you'll be lovely in their hearts. You'll be lovely in their eyes. I pray that you would frustrate the plans of the enemy against their life. We declare in advance that you make a way of escape. For any and every situation you ever find themselves in, even if they gullibly put themselves in it, we come against the plans of the enemy. And we humbly ask you for your plans in every house. And they were moved by the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I declare today that no weapon, no weapon, formed against them shall be used. And any tongue that there rises up against them in judgment, we say, let the will and the word of the Lord be revealed. In every house. You are who he says you are. You have what he says you have. You can do what he says you are. Father, thank you for grace on every house today. And every believer said, amen. You're free to return to your seats. Just keep worshiping. Hold it for just a second. Hold it for just a second. Hold it for just a second.
Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what area you were born into, what your last name is, what your skin color is. The Bible says that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And God called for these families of this house to be blessed in the name of Jesus. So we're saying every house, every house, every house. And we're not satisfied until we fight to see the goodness of God touch every house. It's not enough for my house to be good. I want your house to be good. Every house in the mighty name of Jesus. We stand for each other hand in hand, believing to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We're not waiting to get to heaven. We're calling heaven to earth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't beat heartfelt worship, the anointing of God. Calling every need met in the name of Jesus. Well, y'all know I could get my preach on. But we're going to transition over into our competition. You coming up? We did the boys versus girls in vacation Bible school plugged in kids ministry. And as you saw the buckets up front, we had two buckets up front. All right, kids, I need y'all to listen now. Who can do a good job listening? Show me your listening face. Because whatever boy does the best job listening and whatever girl does the best job listening, I'm going to come to your classroom and give you a sucker. Let me see your list. See that parent? That's parenting one-on-one. Y'all ain't know about that, did you? Look at that. You see how quiet it got? The peace of God surpassing all understanding. Holly. These two suck. Let me see how quiet you can be. So we had our competition. We had the two buckets, boys versus girls. And now Farrah Fair was so locked into this. Farrah was, was. was ready. I don't know where she gets the competitiveness from. Look, no clue. Look, we don't, we, we not here to lose. Amen. We not here to lose. I don't, I don't receive that. And so I told Farrah, I said, now during vacation Bible school, I said it was boys versus girls. We were in a competition. I said, once it ended, I said, we join each other as a team. Because what we're going to do is we're going to distribute these funds into the community. Somebody say outreach. outreach. The Bible says that the goodness of God draws man to repentance. And that's the face that we put in the River Valley and among the world and other parts of the world. And what we want to do is show the goodness of God. And I don't know if we want to announce that yet. We can wait. Where we're going to distribute it. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, the, uh, the total numbers. What was the total? One thousand one hundred thirty-one dollars. Isn't that amazing? And not only is that amazing, watch what God does with it. Because once God touches it, then it multiplies. Amen. And so one group raised sixty more dollars than the other group. It was a tough competition. Yo, you want to get a chance going? Let's go. Boys, 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 boys. Okay. Let me get a drum roll. Tyrone, can I get a drum roll? And the winner is the boys. Yeah. 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 Somebody say, no. Let's switch up the chant from boys. Kings, 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 kings. Hey, okay, okay. So, so who's getting a pie? I know Miss Sheila's down, but it's Miss Megan down to get a pie in the face. Uh oh. So we get the pie, Miss Sheila, <laughs> Miss Megan. Hallelujah. I told him, I said, if it's sweet potato pie, I want it. But it's whipped cream pie. Where's the pies at? Oh, yes. I'm excited to do this. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm too excited. We're going we're gonna to pie y'all from back here. Oh, we're going to stay. We're going to keep key if you do it this way. I'm saying y'all face them. And we're going to boop. <laughs> we need anybody. Anybody got fair? It's okay. Fair don't like it. Fair gonna take the pie. Fair. You gonna stand in mommy's place? Anybody got some more whipped cream? Let's throw a little chocolate on there. Let's throw a little chocolate. All right, let's get a countdown. Y'all ready? Are you ready? You gonna hold this against me? Okay. All right. All right.
right, let's get a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Watch out now. Good job. Everybody give Miss Sheila and Miss Megan a hand. You got it? You got it all? I'm a, I ain't going to say we got too many kids in here. I was about to hit a joke, but I'm not going to do it. We got too many children. But congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, boys and girls. Everybody give the boys and girls a hand. So like I said, even though, even though it was boys versus girls during VBS, we have now joined up to be a team. And we're going to use those monies to bless our community, bless boys and girls that look like you all, bless families that look like us, and we're just excited to be able to outreach and put the true face of, of Jesus on this ministry in the New River Valley. Amen. Amen. So let's give, let's give Ms. Megan and Miss Sheila one more hand. Amen. You come on up, Pastor. It's, it's, it's about time the boys won. It's oh, about yeah, time. See how they do it? See how they do it? We could win if we wasn't buying bags and heels all the time, taking y'all shopping. We could put a little more <laughs> in the offering. Get the microphone. Uh, Praise the Lord. You know that? Yesterday, I, I knew who had won, but I don't know. I guess it's that chivalry thing, the way I was raised. Man, I was just having a problem. I was having a problem with the women getting hit with a pie in the face. But I got over it. <laughs> <laughs> also, real quick. All middle school and high school students were now going to the coffee shop for Relentless Youth. Yeah. <laughs> Farrah, Farrah, you still love G-Dad? Farrah, you still love G-Dad? <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. Man, God is so good. Farrah came up to me the other day, and Trey had come in there to get money. Farrah came in here and said, G-Dad, I need you to bring me money every day. <laughs> Bless her heart. Man, thank God for you all's generosity. We're going to pray about it. We're going to see how the best use those funds. We've, uh, there's a number of good things out there. We have, do we have the video ready? I'll send it in. Do you all have it ready for today from the youth camp that we sold into in Ukraine? Do you all have that ready? Okay, we'll do it next Sunday. Praise God. Amen. Well, God is good. Thank, thank every one of you. Thank every one of you for your generosity. The guy, the guy showed up big, man. I saw when the men's guy going to start giving. I said, it's over now. I said, sookie, sookie now. It's over now. And so, man, praise God. I'm so blessed to have everyone to be here today. I'm just so honored that you shared today. We want to welcome our first-time guests. If you're here for the first time today, if you lift your hand up, we'd like to recognize you. Any first-time guests here today? Keep those hands up. All your first-time guests, we're so blessed. We're honored to have every one of you here today. We have a packet we'd like to put in, in your hand. If you keep those hands up until you get that packet. Inside of there, inside of there is a card. If you'll take your time to fill that out and put it in the offering container, it gives us a record of your visit. We're so blessed and so privileged to have you sharing this day with us, aren't we? In Jesus' name, praise you. Open up your heart. We believe God do something supernatural in your life. In the days that we're living in, your church home ought to be a primary, a, a primary uh, target an emphasis, area of emphasis in your life. If you get the, your, church, your home church right, it's going to put you a long way down the road. Right. I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you. You need to fight for the relationships that matter in your life. You need to fight for the relationships. I've heard a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people since the pandemic saying, man, I've just gotten used to staying home. Uh, and, I, and I keep thinking about that boiling frog, the boiling frog. And uh, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a graphic, and I put this thing out one time on Facebook. The danger of missing church is that there'll come a time when you won't miss it. But it'll be too late. And, uh, you know, keep your home church right and keep your relationship right. Just like you're doing your marriage in your company. You have to fight, you have to fight for your relationship with your company, you, you, know, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, where your, your employer, the, where you work, the labor of your hand, your vocation. You have to fight for those relationships. And, and, and much more so 
in the house of God with your pastor and with the church family God's put you in. You got to fight for the relationships that matter. Does this, does this resonate with anyone in here today? Fight for the relationships that matter. And uh, you get those things right in your life. Get those things right in your life. And uh, uh, it's going to put you a long way down the road. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence today. I'm so glad to have you here today. Bless every one of you in Jesus' name. Well, it's offering time. We get an opportunity to sow. You can take those, first time guests, you take those and put them inside of the offering container today. God is so good. God is so good to us. Praise God. Amen. Uh, we have an opportunity to sow and to give into the kingdom of God. We've got a number of people who are traveling on vacation. Matter of fact, let me just pray over them right now. I just really have it on my heart. Father, I just, and for the rest of you that will be vacating, traveling some in the next weeks, you know, people coming out of the pandemic, people's headed to the beach and to lots of different places. I, I just I feel, I feel strongly impressed of the Holy Spirit to pray over safety of all of our families. Yeah. Yeah. Father, just pray safety over all of our families yeah. as they're traveling on vacations and trips and things. Yeah. I just ask that you just, just cover them and just protect them. And I ask you for restoration in their lives and that you would protect them and keep them and keep them safe in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the hand of God. Thank you for the blessing of God in every one of their lives in Jesus' name. And for those who are viewing online, we welcome you and greet you for our JCC family local throughout the region and other parts of the state, the nation, and even other parts of the world that are viewing. We welcome you in Jesus' name and speak blessings on you in Jesus' name. Well, it's time we can for sow, sowing. This is an opportunity. Say, say an opportunity. You have to recognize opportunity. Opportunities mean nothing if you don't capitalize on them. Opportunities mean nothing. I've, how many of you have ever missed opportunities before? Oh, yeah. I remember one time I was a, a salesman was on selling me some, trying to sell me some real estate, some property, what have you. And uh, man, and, and he offered me an incredible deal, and I passed him up on it. And uh, the next year, the value of that property doubled. The next value, the next year, the profit, that the value of that property doubled, and he offered it to me for half that the year in front of that. Somebody say opportunity. opportunity. Opportunity means nothing if you don't capitalize on it. Anybody in here ever missed an opportunity? Any of you ever felt good about it? It's not a good feeling. It. I pray that you'll recognize the opportunity when you sow and when you give. There's an opportunity in front of you. As we sow and as we give, you license God. God said all of the earth under the authority of seed, time, and harvest. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. What's over man soweth. That shall he also reap. So when we sow, this is leaving your hand, but it's not leaving your life. It's out there creating the life that God has for you. When you're beating in your giving, and we thank every one of you for your faithfulness in your giving. God has been good to us. If tithes, which are reflections of God's ownership of our lives. We've been brought out of the darkness into the kingdom of light and offerings which is surplus that we begin to increase in the kingdom of God. And we set ourselves in agreement for every one of you, for God's increase and God's blessing every one of your, every one of your lives in Jesus' name. You receive that today. You receive that in Jesus' name. You make out checks, make them payable to JCC or Jubilee Christian Center. If you're still a memorial gift or something, a special gift beyond your tithes and offerings towards something specifically, feel free to note that on it. We'd be happy to agree with you. Father, thank you for the opportunity to sow, the opportunity to give in Jesus' name. You can stand your feet and follow the direction of the ushers. We're going to minister to the Lord in our giving. Stand up today and present our giving to the Lord. Father, we honor you. We thank you for your goodness and all humility and genuine thankfulness of heart. Father God, we come before you today and present these times and offerings through the Lord Jesus Christ, who is mediator of the new covenant by, by his own blood. He ratified it with his own blood. 
by the Holy Spirit, we stand here today and call you our Heavenly Father. Father, receive our giving. Father, we command this seed today to go and to grow. Harvest, we'll see you real soon. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I want to and I want to make an announcement here today. There's a, a, a James Young's son, Brittany Young, uh, passed away unexpectedly the other day, and there is going to be a memorial service at Christian Growth Center this evening. I'm ordained through uh, Rob Sal Ministries, Rob Sal rather, and uh, he's ministered here before. We're raised in a church, we're part of the church for 23 years. And some of you have actually went through there, had parts and seasons in your life when you were there. And uh, they'll have a visitation this evening at 5 o'clock, and then at 6 o'clock will be the memorial service for his life with Britain. So we want to reach out. The Bible said, weep with those that weep, right. rejoice with those that rejoice. We need to reach out and touch one another, navigate that. And uh, so praise God. Thank God for him. That's in Christiansburg, Virginia. I think it's 1850 Electric Way. I'm not sure. It's beside Hubble Lighting. Praise God. Let's get that. will be at 5 and 6 this evening. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all ready for the word? Let's get right here into the word. I've got something from the, from the Lord here today for you. If you have your Bibles, please lift your Bibles up and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I believe within it is the power to change my life. I believe in my heart. Therefore, I confess with my mouth that today, this day, after having heard the word of God, my life will be changed forever. Never again the same. Never, never in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Man, I got something really rich from the word here today. Oh, Jesus. The other day, I was on the mentor's corner. That's a Thursday morning, that's a Thursday morning uh, uh, time that I spend with, with men, 815, uh, you know, on, on Zoom call. I've got the link. Any, in, any and all men are welcome to, to, uh, to get in on that and be a part of that. Um, there was a very strong anointing. And this past week, I was going on there. And I was sharing with these guys, and I'll tell you what's the truth, man. This thing came out, uh, isn't it something how we tell people sometimes, I'll tell you what's the truth. I mean, like, sometimes I lie, but this time I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> uh, I got on this subject. I got on this subject. And, man, this thing exploded. I, I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't know, for, uh, for the Christian, I don't know if there's a more important topic that I can get on than what I've got here today. And that, that is a relationship with the Word of God. Everybody see you fanning, Phyllis? Put your hand down. Everybody see you fanning? Everybody see you fanning? Girl? Yeah. There's a, a relationship with the Word of God. It's a key. It's key. It's, I don't know of a more important subject for, for us to deal with as a Christian. I'm here to tell you, every one of you here today, you need a relationship with the Word of God. And it'll keep you in your midnight hour. It'll bring you out of a test and take you over into a testimony. Isn't that right, Carlos Cox? The Word of God is real. Over in Psalms 107, verse number 19, matter of fact, I want you to turn over there. I've had a number of scriptures. I hope you'll, hope you'll, uh, I hope you'll be... I'll be taking notes here today. I've got a number of scripts I want to share with you. You need every one of them. Yes. The Word of God is your the word, the word of God is now. It shouldn't be the last thing you do. First. It'll be the first thing you do. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the, the Almighty. Psalm 107, verse 19 and 20. You need a relationship with the Word of God. For years, I don't know about, I don't know about you all. <laughs> my, my first church experience, I had a pastor that taught us scriptures. I had a, a pastor that taught us scriptures, and, and, we were, and I was well acquainted with that denomination. But it wasn't until after I got saved in 1980 at Virginia State University in Petersburg, Virginia, got in the church, got into the Word, and started getting some good teaching that I understood how imperative it was that I have a relation. Somebody say relationship. relationship. A relationship with the Word of God. The Word of God will change your life. And man, we was brought up, man, I brought up, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, the, uh, I think walked right in front of me. <laughs> brought up in it, you know, oh, the Lord said, you know, my God, uh, my Lord, uh, you know, been brought up around all of that, you know, and this, that, and you know, and singing songs and, and the quartets, yeah, and all that stuff, man. And there's no emphasis on the word. 
We're singing about storms. We sing about sickness. We sing about disease. We sing about depression. Somebody sing about the presence and the promise of God. You need a relationship with the word. That's what changes your life. And man, I start coming out and realize that God actually had something to say about these different areas of my life. And I'm here to tell you today, God's got something to say about the different areas of your life and wants to bring you over into an amazing place. Here's a matter of fact, before we go to Psalm 107, 19, 20, this was the scripture I saw the other day. Jesus. In the King James, I'm going to read out the King James, and I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. It's James 1, verse number 21. I think you've heard me say this before. You've heard me say this before. I want to say it again. I think James 1 is one of the most amazing chapters in the whole Bible. He covers several profound needed topics, places where you need to go, issues you need to go over there. And so profoundly in James 1, man, it's got some profound stuff over in there. Verse 21 is certainly no exception. I don't like all of the King James English. There's one, there's two words. There's, there's three, there's three or four words I can do. I, and all the rest of it, I feel like it's, I think it's got the Elizabethan English in it. Sounds like, you know, Romeo and Juliet. We're, and, and I don't mean to sound overly critical of King, I use the King James. This, that's where I, I, usually, I usually start there. But there's one particular word that I love there. And at the, in the last part of that, last part of that verse, it says, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. How many are interested in having some real change in your life? Right. Let me ask you, how many of you want everything that God's got planned for you? Right. Don't be ashamed of the person that's beside of you. If you want everything God's got for you, say it out loud, I want everything that God's got for me. <laughs> well, you're going to have to go to his word because God and his word are one. They're one. Psalms 138, verse number two, he said he's exalted his word above his name. In the King James, it said, this engrafted word will save your soul. That word engrafted in the Greek is in futos. The, the, the prefix in means a fixed position. If the word of God's going to do you any good in your life, the first thing you have to do is give it a fixed position in your life. And then the word fut, the suffix futos means to grow, pop up, swell up, take root and start growing. So the engrafted word, there'll be proof from it. If the word's engrafted in your life, there'll be proof from it. The church is not it to entertain you. The church is to grow you up into the plans that God had for you, just like we've been talking about for the past weeks, the plans that God had for you before the foundation. In other words, the word is the way we go to get that. God and his word are one. Would you shout that out today? God and his word are one. It said this engrafted word, this work that you give a fixed position in your life, over your children, your finances, your health, your mind, your peace. I'm commanding every area of your life today to be made whole. It said then grab the word that you give a fixed position in your life. And it begins to take root. It begins to swell up. That word, it actually means, it actually means to swell up, to, 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 to blow up, to swell up, to puff up, to spring up. In other words, there will be evidence of it in your life. That engrafted word. And you give the word the opportunity to grow in your life, you're going to get results. I like the way this goes here today, and I want to say this here today. It says in the Message Bible, I love the way it read this. This is what really blew up inside my heart. I'm sharing with the men the other morning, this past Thursday. It says, so throw all spoiled virtue and cancerous evil in the garbage. In simple humility... Let our gardener, God, landscape you with the word. Listen to it. Making a salvation garden of your life. I'm calling every one of your lives a salvation garden. And there's areas of your life sometimes. Some of you may be able, may be able to, to, to relate to this. There's areas of your life where you've got great success. And then you got some areas of your life, you may be woefully behind. We've been there before. We've been there before. You may, be, you may have some success. You may have some progress in certain areas of your life. But you've got areas of your life that you're challenged here today. Will somebody say amen? amen. Let's come on to realville for just a moment. you got areas of your life 
And that's where the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5, it said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, taking every thought captive. You either take them captive or they'll take you captive. It said we have to take those thoughts captive. Now out of that comes identity and out of that comes our behavior. So if you want something different, you got to do something different. I'm here to tell you today, you need a relationship with the Word of God. More of the Word, less of the world. More of the Word, less of television. More of the Word, less of your friends. More of the Word, less of other people contaminating you. More of the Word, less of, just of you being infected by other people's poor decisions. The Word of God will change your life. You need a relationship with the Word of God. And the Word of God, and God, thank God, God is no respect of persons. If God did it for somebody else, God will do it for you. Amen. And it says right here, it said right here, this engrafted word is able to save your soul. God wants to make your life a salvation garden. This is what I saw. That word is soteria in the Greek. Soteria. It means wholeness. It means, it means it's all inclusive. It's deliverance. It's healing. It's prosperity in every area of your life. God wants you, God wants your children. God wants your children up as those, as those arrows in the hands of a mighty warrior. God wants your seed. The Bible said the seed of the righteous will be mighty in the earth. Your parents say amen here today. It said your, said your seed will be mighty in the earth. Amen. So you talk up. Speak up for your seed's sake. Said your seed will be mighty in the earth. You go find, find the promise that covers your problem. Fill your heart with it and get busy with it coming out of your mouth. Find the promise that covers your problem. Fill your heart with it and get busy with it coming out of your mouth. God wants, and the message Bible said he wants to make your life a salvation garden. Or you can see salvation in every area of your life. I'm here to tell you, that, and I want you to hear this here today. God wants to see, God wants to use your life to advertise wholeness. And what his plan was, don't you stop until you look like the salvation garden that God has called you to be. Somebody say amen. amen. Every area of your life. You may be doing very well with your health. You may be doing very well with your children. But you're suffering financially. You have for some time now. Poverty is not the will of God. Over in Galatians, the third chapter, it's verse number 13. It says that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. That's right. That the blessing of Abraham. Yeah. We've been delivered from poverty, sickness, and death. Say that with me. We have been delivered from poverty, sickness, and death. Say it, say it again. We have been delivered from poverty, sickness, and death. It's not talking about natural death. It's talking about spiritual death. But if you start walking in those first three, it's going to affect how long you live. See, you need a revelation of the Word of God. Child of God, don't wait until there's a storm for you to try to build a relationship with the Word. Don't wait for a storm. Jesus said, the wise person, when the storm came, the house was already built on the rock. So there's that relationship with the Word of God. We can relate to and identify and associate with some very unhealthy things until we renew our mind. A lot of people put our emphasis, and I have people, some people uh, want a lot, uh, lots of different, uh, different trappings and embellishments and style of ministry and stuff and want people to lay hands on them. I believe for laying on of hands and, and I believe in supernatural manifestation of the Holy Ghost. I am a miracle man. I believe in miracles and the gifts of the Spirit. All nine gifts of the Spirit, I believe in every one of them. I support the fivefold ministry. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the miraculous. But there's some things won't happen until you renew your mind. You have to deal with the way you think. That's right. Taking every thought captive. I shared this one time before. I want to go here real quickly here over in Numbers, the 33rd chapter. I want to show this over here. Numbers, 33rd chapter. Um, London, <laughs> London brought me some cucumbers out of his garden. Is that your first fruits or is your second, third, fourth fruits? It don't matter. They're going in a salad. Don't get me wrong. Now. They're going in a salad. And I thought about that this morning. How many of you, how many of y'all have got a garden. <laughs> How many of you know somebody got a garden? How many of y'all had somebody talk about a garden? Okay. How many of y'all ever seen a picture of a garden? <laughs> you have people talking about the garden. They'll say, man, man, my, uh, man, my, my tomatoes and my, my corn did good. 
But, 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 but my beans, man, my beans got the, these bugs and things on them. This, that, and the other. My carrots did all right. My potatoes did all right. But my, my watermelons were bursting and exploding. This, that, and the other before the time on the vine. Let me tell you, God wants to bless your watermelons, your cucumbers. God wants to bless your tomatoes. God wants to bless your corn. God wants to bless your cabbage. God wants to bless your whole garden. God wants your life. A salvation garden. Every part of your life. People can see who you belong to. Every part of your life. A salvation garden. Not just good tomatoes, good cucumbers, good, good carrots, good potatoes, good tomatoes, good Oprah, not Oprah Winfrey. Good every part of your garden. God wants it blessed. A salvation garden. Not just good cucumbers, good tomatoes. Every part of your garden. Don't you stop until your life looks like what God called it to be. First Corinthians, the third chapter, Paul said this. He said, God is a God. Some of y'all look up the verse here. It seemed like it's verse 9 or 10. He said, God, he, said, he calls us and refers to us as God's husbandry. That word husbandry, and it kind of loses us. That Elizabeth in English loses us. That word husbandry means garden. We're the garden of God. Come on, say, say I'm the garden of God. And God's the master gardener. Listen and God determines, man, and this is the whole amazing thing here. I'm not deep enough to even scrap the side. i got to try to put this in some semblance of context so you'll understand how absolutely awesome and amazing our Father God is. The whole botanical system, all plant life throughout all the universe is run off of a science of what's referred to as cross-pollination. I started doing some reading on it one time, and after I got through the introduction of paragraph, man, I laid the book down. God didn't go to school to learn this. God ain't reading up on this. God created it. He created it. And then Paul referred to us, the believer, as part of that garden of God. Now, there's a corporate international garden of God the body of Christ. But there's another garden of God, and that's your personal life. Listen, 1 Corinthians 12, I think it's, eh, 1 Corinthians 12, it's like it's verse number 15. It said that God sits in the body that's pleased him. I was hoping I'd have some master gardeners in today. Colette's dad was a master. Now, I was raised up around gardens. I was raised up around gardens. And Colette and I got married, and I started hanging out with her dad, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison took gardening to a whole other level for me. That's what you call a master gardener. Now, some people just kind of put it in there and hope it turned out all right. But then some people know that you don't put, you don't plant this next to this. It's because of this thing of cross-pollination. And you can't, plant, you can't plant onions next to potatoes. Did you know that? The onion will get in the potatoes' eyes, and they can't see Okay, let's keep, let's keep going. Let's, let's keep it. I kind of lost that. Just stay, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. You have to put it in its right place in order to optimize. What are you saying? You can't just go to any church and be what God planned for you to be. You don't choose your church. God's already chosen it for you. You don't go choose your wife. You choose one God. Come on, brother Rush. Say amen. Say amen. That big hearty rub voice of yours. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Stop choosing your cars. Stop choosing your houses. Stop choosing your wife. Stop choosing your man. Not if you're in a relationship with the word of God. Man, you got this guy, man. Come on, Louise. Why is it? Why is it you won't go out with me? I, I see the way you look at me, girl. Well. I need to be honest with you. What is it? I'm in a relationship. You can't, oh, oh that's the reason you can't talk to me, because you ain't really, what's his name? His name is Jesus. And he said, in Amos 3.3, 3, he said, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter, said, come out from among them. How can light work with darkness? The unbeliever with the believer. How can I what? The Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all these other things that added unto you. I'm seeking the kingdom and you ain't. So we can't walk together. Right. I'm in a relationship. Somebody say, I'm in a relationship. I'm preaching real good. Y'all just keep looking straight ahead right now. I'm preaching real good right now. I'm in a relationship. 
mental relationship with the word. This is very real. God wants all of your life to look that way. But you're going to have to have a relationship with the word of God. Man, this is real good. This is real good. Over in uh, Numbers, the 33rd chapter. Have y'all found Numbers 33 yet? Numbers 33. The master gardener. <clears throat> God puts in the garden and says to him, you can't keep everybody in your life. There's some people you need to let go. If God's the master gardener. You've heard me do a, a baby dedication before. Y'all heard me do baby dedication. I said they're like a garden. I said, you got to plant in them what you want in them. You got to pull the weeds. And you got to keep the critters out. Keep looking straight ahead. Yeah. A relationship with the Word of God. A relationship with the Word of God will lift you above those negative emotions you have. A relationship with the Word of God will deliver you out of depression. A relationship with the Word of God, and as you begin to renew your mind and let God start giving you wisdom, it will deliver you out of ignorance in any area of your life where you need to develop, hone your skills and life skills. How many of y'all want to live life at another level? I'm praying here today that you won't be satisfied with being defeated in any area of your life. Miles Monroe made this comment a long time ago, and I, I mean, he said, well, I'm very sure it was him that said this. A wonderful, wonderful man of God, met him personally, ministered with him in, in, uh, in, uh, in Michigan. Wonderful man of God. Um, he made this comment. He said, you're a garden, not a forest. He said, God loves gardens. And he hates forests. Now, there's some people who sit up and, are, and argue with me on that. You, 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 you got your right to be wrong. You know, I, I want to honor that. You got your right to be wrong. You think forests are beautiful. No, you should have seen what it was supposed to have looked like. A forest is just something that happened. But a garden was something that was created by God's man. Shh. And a garden brings joy to God. How many of y'all ever seen somebody with a great garden? How many of y'all start hanging out with people and become friends to people because they got such a good garden? Come on, somebody. Get it out into the open. Your life's supposed to be a garden, not a forest. You're supposed to be something that was, you're supposed to live a life that was designed for you, not something that just happened. You're not supposed to look like what's, hap what's happened or what's went on in your life. You're supposed to look like God, God's designed life for you. Your garden. Over in Numbers, the 33rd chapter, God's calling the, children of, uh, calling the children of Israel out of Egypt. Look over here. This is an amazing thing. Numbers, 33rd chapter. I'm on the wrong page. Numbers 33. It's on page 237. Numbers, 33rd chapter. Look with me over here in, in, verse, in verse number 52. Verse 52. Y'all got your Bibles out? Yeah. Numbers 33, verse number 52. It said, then you shall drive out. How many of you want to win in life? If you want to win in life, say it. I want to win, I want to win in life. Want to win. He said, then you shall drive out all of the inhabitants. How many, how many of them? All the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures, all their memories, everything that reminds you of the past, and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. And thou shalt dispossess or drive out the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, live their lifestyle, for take up residence there. For I have given you the land to possess it. For I have given you, <laughs> God, says, God says to you today, for I have given you this life for you to take possession of it. Let me say it one more time. God has given you an amazing life for you to take possession of it. But you're going to have to be very purposeful about taking possession of it. Look at this here. In verse 54, 54 and you shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more you shall, you shall give the more inheritance, the fewer you shall give the less inheritance. What you need is what God wants to bless you to where everything, every need is met in your life. Every person's inheritance shall be in the place where in their lot falleth according to the tribes of your father you shall inherit. I believe in nepotism. But I'm going to tell you here today, I want, I'm going to tell you here today, God wants to bless every family. I'm, I'm coming against every curse that's lingered around in every family here today. I'm going to come against every curse. I'm defining it in the name of Jesus and speaking blessing over every one of your houses and every one of your families here today and declaring here today that you'll live and not die and you'll come into the, into the land that God has given you. Somebody say amen. amen. According to the tribes of your father shall inherit, verse 55, 55, here it is, here it is, here it is, highlighter ink pen. You need all this, but especially verse 55. 
But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, if you won't deal with these people you're trying to keep in your life, these Pulaskiites, Farallonites, these, these, these Raphroditeites, these Christiansburgites, these, uh, these Floydites, all these, everybody got their ites. In their days, it was the Jebusites and the Mennonites. It was all these different ites. Everybody's got their ites, but you're going to have to make a decision on the people you let and hang around in your life. I hear people say this sometimes. I hear God, I talk to a lot of guys who are coming out of incarceration. They're coming out and getting started transitioning back into a free life. I call it a free life. Um, the prison is not without, the prison is within. And they come to me, and then when, I, when they tell me this, when they tell me this, I say, what you're doing, when they tell me this, this, this is a lot, a lot of the time the response, and it's like a trigger in my thinking. They said, I'm trying to stay out of trouble. What I heard them say was this, Pastor, I'm trying to do all the same things I did before and stay out of trouble. That's what I heard them say. You're going to have to drive some of these inhabitants out of your life if it matters enough to you to live this big life that God's got prepared for you. I, I say this. This is, a, this is a saying that I coined. I coined this statement. Great people with great callings must make great decisions. And sometimes they're a hard call. Met over in John, the sixth chapter, he said that the, Jesus stood over and told him, said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you can't have, have a part in this kingdom with me. And they got up and put that Baptist finger up like this. Okay. Isn't it Baptist that do that, Brother Williams? Brother Williams used to do that. I caught him out in the service on things. He's never done it again. Put that finger up like this. And tip out like they tipped out on Jesus. And the Bible said they followed him never again, no more, ever. What a sobering moment. They never, ever followed him again. Some people hear certain things from the word and you can't identify with it. That's the areas you need to buckle in and say, I'm going to take every thought captive. I start talking about healing. You said, but this cancer runs in my family. I start talking about your family being blessed, and your family has been riddled by alcoholism. We had alcoholism in the Hashes family tree, but we slayed that giant. It started with, it started with Linda getting saved, and then Linda then out and got saved, then I got saved, and I was preaching to telephone poles and conks and groundhogs and stuff. <laughs> Anything would stand still, man, I would have told them, but lead them to the Lord. Yes, yes. And then we broke the power of that in our family. You can break every curse in your family. God wants your life to be a salvation garden, the whole garden, the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the squash, every area of your life. Every area. He tells us here how to do it in verse 55. That those, look, 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 look. He said, if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it, it shall come to pass, this shouldn't surprise you, that those which you let remain, those thoughts you let remain, those Achilles heel that you let remain, that stuff that you make excuses for, giving it a future. Those that you let remain, those people you keep in your life, those habits, those addictions, those weaknesses in your character, your decision, those things that you let remain. Look at this. They shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides. And they will vex you in the land wherein you dwell. In your life, they're going to keep you out of God's best. Those thoughts that you let remain. Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter, says taking every thought captive. Say it with me. Taking every thought captive. We don't deal with our thought life the way we should. Dad Hagen used to make this comment. He said, you can't keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Yeah, taking every thought captive. What are you dealing with here today? Everybody's got a place. Everybody's got a place where God's trying to get over that little nuance, trying to landscape your life and make it a salvation garden where God prospers every area of your life. God has blessed me with the air that came along kicking and screaming with Colette and I. Y'all ever seen the police show? That it's, I don't, it may not be on anymore. Is it called Bad Boys? You know, Bad Boys, Bad Boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? It's kind of jamming a little bit, you know. What you gonna do when they come for you, Bad Boy? And I watch them bring these guys in under arrest. Sometimes those guys come along peaceably. And some of those, times, those guys give a little, little bit of resistance. And then sometimes they're fighting, man, and whatever, whatever level this arresting officer needs to take it to, he's going to go there with him. If I may, I may need to call the boys. 
Blackjack, mace. What's the new electric shocker thing? Taser, taser, taser. That's only something they sell on QVC, taser. <laughs> Whatever level they need to take. Why? They're taking them captive. Child of God, child, child of God. Whatever level you need to take it to, you need to take every thought captive. Some thoughts come along peaceably, easy. How many of y'all overcome some things easily? Man, I remember this one thing. I use them as an example for this. I use our family as an example in a lot of this. We got our challenges. We have our challenges in our family. It's not hard for them following somebody that's perfect. It's not hard. It's, it's, it's hard for them following someone, you know, coming after, coming after somebody like me. <laughs> Listen, we all got our problems. We all, we all, yeah, that's right. We all need Jesus. We all, we all have our challenges. But I'll never, I'll never apologize for the blessing of God on our life. We got battles. Hear, hear, me, hear me today. We get bad reports. That's right. That's right. That's right. We get our heart broke. That's right. That's exactly how it is. Yeah. Like everybody else. Have to deal with discouragement. We've been abandoned. We've had people walk off. And I have to keep on ticking. I have to keep on showing up. How do I do it? By a relationship with the Word of God. Taking every thought captive. What area in your life are you dealing with here today? Well, you need to take a thought captive. God's trying to make your life a salvation garden. Man, can you imagine that? What an amazing thing. He wants every area of your life to look like it was designed on purpose. Just for Oh, this is real here today. Amen. And it said, those that you, and those that you let remain shall vex you in the land that you're called into. Turn over to John 15, chapter 1, to show you this here today. John 15 speaks of this relationship. Man, there's a, several scriptures in here. I want you to understand this here today. God has purpose for everyone to bear fruit. We don't use that word fruit. I mean, if you go into a potential employer's office, you don't, tell, you don't tell him of your past fruits. You tell him of your job experience and what kind of successes you had. I call it results. God wants to give you results. Come on, say it out of your mouth. God wants to give me results every area of your life. God wants your life embellished as a salvation garden. Every area of your life looks like you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. John 15, chapter said, I'm the vine, my father, the husband, man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth what? More fruit. And not, not, not just more fruit. I want you to look down with me down in verse, in verse number 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. He keep, he's not going away on this fruit thing. Why? Because God's always designed you and purpose for you to be fruitful. Results. In every area of your life. Don't let the devil discourage you over area. Anybody got some errors in your life here today that you're ashamed of? Any of y'all got some errors in your life here today that you're ashamed of? Any of y'all got some errors in your life here today? Well, you need, you, 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 your life experience is not where you know God wants it. Any, any of y'all got some errors in your life want to lift you to another level? Let me ask you a question. Any areas of your life here today where you feel like you're defeated? Come on, let's get, come on to real bill for just a little while. You got some errors where you're totally defeated. Man, you may be killing it in certain areas in your life. And in a certain area, the devil's kicking your hind den, taking you to the woodshed. Let me tell you something. The devil ain't running nothing up in here. When you start getting a hold of the word of the God, word of God, it's a game changer. Look at this relationship. Judah said, I'm the vine. Listen to me. If you're the fruit, everything that's in the vine belongs. Everything, everything that's in the vine belongs to the fruit. Everything that's in the vine belongs to the fruit. The fruit's got access to everything in the vine. Kind of like heirs of God and joint heirs of Jesus. If there's healing in the vine, fruit's got access to healing. If there's deliverance in the vine, then man, fruit's got access to deliverance. If there's financial prosperity in the vine, then the fruit's got access to it. If there's joy, in the vine, 
then fruit's got access to that joy. Everything's in the vine, the, the fruit's got access to it. Listen to this. And then the second part of that relationship, then you got the, the husband man. That's Father God. That's the vine dresser. All of this is in your relationship with God. You receive everything when you come into Christ Jesus, everything that belongs to you that's in the word of God, it belongs to you. Jeremiah 1, verse number 12, write it down. It said, God watches over his word to perform it. Get not your traditions, not your denominational beliefs necessarily, but he watches over his word to perform it. God will perform his word in your life. Everything that's in the vine belongs to the fruit. But at the same time, you are at the discretion of anything that God sees in your life that is not fruitful for your life. Anything that will not produce good fruit unto God, God has the authority to his word to deal with that. The same word that gives you promises is the same word that prunes the negative stuff out of your life. Somebody say amen. It's called making Jesus Lord. There's an old saying to say I had come up in the church. Some of you have heard this. If he ain't Lord of all, he ain't Lord at all. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Don't you stop until your life looks like the salvation garden God designed it to be. I want to share this here, this real quick, and I'm done. I'm done here today. There was a um, number of years ago, I worked as a design draftsman, facilities engineering, Hercules Aerospace. And you local people call it Rabbit Arsenal. I, don't, I like Hercules Aerospace, Her Hercules Incorporated Aerospace. It sounds more distinguished. Most of y'all just say Rabbit Arsenal. <laughs> anytime there was an explosion, hear me, anytime there was an explosion, we had to go out and mark. We called call it a, 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 a missile search. We had to locate fragments from the building, and we could go out. We could, because of our work in drafting department, we recognized materials, and we would measure them and plot them. These huge maps. We walked these huge grids. We walked miles. We were living there with an explosion, especially, especially if someone died. And the first one, the first blast was nitroglycerin, NG2. It was a horrible blast. And you got to know, you read so much about the guy that died, it's like you, got to, you knew him. It was amazing. I had the largest find of his body. I would find the largest find of his body. Then they were looking for the ductor valve. The ductor valve is what they it felt caused the blast. I found it. And I didn't recognize it at the time. I did, I, later on, and that was success was on my life. Success. Even when I had people working against me in corporate America, you can't keep me down. I've got the favor of God all my life. Take it to another level. There's favor on this church. I'm going to say it one more time. There's favor on this church. Let me take it further. If it's on this church and you're connected to this church, there's favor on you. Don't you be ashamed. Speak up. If you'll, don't you be ashamed. Speak up right now. You students, you need faith. You need God to do some stuff. Go before you. Do some stuff they ain't never done for nobody else. They'll do for you because of the favor of God on your life. I got, I got a revelation of Proverbs 16, verse number 3. It says, roll all of your works over upon the Lord, completely trusting in him. He'll cause your very thoughts to conform to his will. Your plans will be established, and you'll have good success. I kept getting promoted, promoted, promoted. And when all of those who opposed my prosperity were gone, I was still climbing the ladder because God's hand is on my life. Somebody ought to say something in this place. I never apologize for the blessing. You don't know what I've been through to get where I am right now. I've had hell come against me. Get it. Hell come and go. And the kid's still here. That's right. That's right. Because of relationship with the Word of God. That's right. When you're not treated right, you need a relationship with the Word of God. When the doctor says you got cancer and you can't live, you need a relationship with the Word of God. When you believe you're raising a prophet and the prophet's done at the crack house, you need a, re a relationship with the Word of God. When fear is trying to rack your mind, you need a relationship with the Word of God. When you, everything said that ain't nothing going to change in your life, you need a relationship with the Word of God. When lack is trying to push you and trying to lean out, trying to lay on your life, you say, the devil is a liar. Let God be true. God is my Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll not live in lack. I got a relationship with the Word of God. 
We don't expect this stuff happen. When the, when the phone call rings at 2 o'clock in the morning, when the phone call rings at 1.30 in the morning, I don't like phone. Unless you got a pregnant woman in your family and you're waiting for them to call, when you got a call 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, it ain't never good. You need a relationship with the Word of God. Every area of your life where the devil's challenging the promise of God in your life, I'm here to tell you what you need is a relationship with the Word of God. Everything that's in the vine belongs to the fruit. Everything that's in the vine belongs to the fruit. God wants to embellish every area of your life. God wants to embellish every area of your life. Looking like who you've been made to be. But you're going to have to take every thought captive. Until your life starts looking like the garden was designed to be. I'm in a God moment right now. How many of y'all sense it here today? You know what? Out of, very few times have I had most everyone listening to me. There's been a few times I've had everyone listening to me. It's a real moment. You got people sleeping. You got people distracted sometimes. But right now, you're really listening to me. You're really listening. I feel like this is a real, this is a sovereign moment right now. I want to pray for every weak area of your life. So you just told that man with that with a hand, stretch forth your hand. He didn't have to tell him which hand. He knew which hand he was talking about. It was the one he was hiding. It was the one he was hiding that withered hand. And the church has got to be a place where you stretch forth that withered hand. Listen, let me can I say something to you today? I don't need you to fail to make me look good. I don't need you to look bad for me to look successful. We got our battles too. I feel this here today. Kayla, you may be the only hope your family has got. Don't you quit. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost in there. You need a relationship with the Word of God. Sunday morning is not about entertainment. It's about you growing in your relationship with the Word of God and with the body of Christ. I want to pray for every area of life here today. If you're here today, you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, I'm going to pray for two classes of people. And I'd like for you to raise your hand. If you need to rededicate your life, or if you've never dedicated your life to the Lord, and you say, I want to be saved today. I want to know I have eternal life. Lift your right hand up on the shaved and wave it in here today. There's one right there. Anyone else? Hey, today. There you go, right there. There you go. 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 Would you whisper this in faith right now into the heavenlies? Father, I want all my family saved. What you're saying? Ma, get your faith out there for Nikenzie. Get your faith out there for your sister. Do y'all feel God? Do y'all feel God healing? Those that raised their hands, there's two men that raised their hands. Don't you come to me? Y'all let them out. Let them come to me. Come to me. life forevermore. What a simple, powerful prayer. Change your life. I pray that God will put in your heart those of you in online. I'm praying that God will concern your heart for the lost and the struggling. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel, I, I feel, like, I feel like there's a number, of you, a number of rest of you here today. There's great distance. I feel there's some of you here today. There's great distance between you and the Lord. Get up and come to the altar. Come up, get up and come right now. There's room for you at the altar. There's distance between you and God. You need to change that today. Get up and come and don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Get up and come. 
Get up and come. There's great distance between you and God. Well, I'm going to change that today. I'm going to change that today. Somebody say today. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Today. This same prayer will work for both. We'll, we'll cover all these situations here. We've got some, we've got some sisters come here. Some sisters, some brothers with these brothers stand behind him. He's somebody, there you go. Thank you, Samantha. There you go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Would you pray this prayer right now? This is yours to pray. This is yours to pray. And you can mouth it and just say anything. But man, when your heart means it, it goes to a whole nother level. When you believe it and you mean it with all your heart, I hear one word. I hear one word in my heart right now. Surrender. Surrender. Lord, I'm going to trust you with my life. You'll pray this prayer right now. It will cover every one of you, whether you're not saved or you need to rededicate your heart and your life to God. This will cover every one of you here today. I'm going to lead you. That's my part. Your part will be to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth publicly here today. Would you pray this prayer with me, every one of you here today, engaging your heart. That's holy ground over in your heart. Thank you, Lord, for coming over here. Dear precious Jesus, repeat it, repeat it out loud. Dear precious Jesus, I'm giving my heart to you today. Wash me by your blood. I'm giving my life to you today. I believe you died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that you died and you was raised from the dead. And you did it for the whole world. Today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. So save me, Lord. Wash away my sins. I give my life to you today. And I call you my Lord forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. All oh, the blood. The blood of Jesus. God's good plan. God's good plan. Every one of you here at the altar. There's three things you need to get right. Three things you need to get. You heard this about the relationship, the word. Three things you need to get right. Number one, get your church home right. People take the church home too lightly. Like A&P, Kroger's, Food City. No, 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 no. It's not cafeteria plan. Piccadilly's. You picking what you want. If you go get planted somewhere, those who are planted, Psalms 92, verse number 13, those who are planted in the house of God will prosper in his courts. Get your church home right. Find the pastor who has a heart for you. Number three, start making decisions on the people that you have in your life. And that's going to launch your life. I pray for every one of you here today. I pray for every one of you here today that you'll start moving forward today. And you'll start growing in the relationship that you have with the Word of God. Salvation is instantaneous. Right. It just happened. You just get saved. You just gave your heart to the Lord for the first time. What's your name? Eddie. Eddie. Bless you, Eddie. Eddie, draw and look at your family. Draw and look at your new family. Yeah. Father, I pray today for every one of them that you would keep every one of them. Somebody stretch forth your hand. Keep every one of them. And may they grow towards and into the garden of salvation for every area of their life. I pray for every one of them. Would you bring her over here? I pray that you would bring them into all of your plan for their life. In Jesus' name. Every man, every woman at this altar, I pray for the fullness of your plan for everyone in their lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. I think you got some books here to hand them. I would encourage you, to, those of you around the altar, I want y'all to take, these, take them apart for just a second. You're with some of these guys. 
Yeah, there you go. Get their contact information, even a valid email address and cell phone numbers and things like that. Come back again next week. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are glad you're here today? It's amazing how you have to fight to get to church sometimes. You need to get through that to a place where it's exceptional for you not to be at church. Fight for the relationships that matter in your life. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your time today. You need a relationship with the Word of God. God's Word's not evolving. When He spoke it, it's timeless and true. I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. And that, Sister West. <laughs> Love every one of you. Bless every one of you. Walk in everything that God has for you. Fight for your relationships that matter. Fight for the relationships that matter. May God bless every one of you to be a salvation garden. And don't you quit because you got certain areas of your life that are not going right right now. Where you are is not who you are. God's got a bigger plan. You keep on going, and we're going to walk with you and rejoice with you in Jesus' name. Thank you for your time. Praise God, praise God. What a wonderful time we have had today in the house of God. Praise God. Young, young men, continue to keep moving forward, man. Continue to keep moving forward in the things of God. Amen. Praise God. And you know what? One of the things I've noticed about both of you all is I always see you smiling. So continue to walk and enjoy the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So right now I'm going to release the parents first of their children so you can go ahead and get your little ones. Oh, man, listen, so my son said, hey, Dad, you know, we don't do announcements anymore. You know, his voice is just crazy. I feel like I'm talking to a grown man in the house. Yeah, so, Dad, uh, you know, we don't do an, uh, you know, announcements anymore, but, you know, somebody's birthday. This is what he said to me on Thursday. You know, somebody's birthday is on Saturday. So I feel since you get to hold the microphone, you could announce my birthday in church. So, man, y'all see my little man. He turned 10 yesterday. Uh, so tell him happy birthday, man. That's why I said 13. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. He said 13. He turned 13 yesterday. So it's crazy. I feel like I blinked and he turned 13. Anyway, hey, guys, God is good, man. He's always faithful to you, and he loves you. God bless y'all. You're dismissed. Praise God. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus?